this video will discuss two methods for hematocrit determination. Hematocrit is a proportion of blood that consists of red blood cells and is expressed in a percent value. Two general methods for hematocrit determination are macrohematocrit method and microhematocrit method. One procedure for each method will be shown. The macrohematocrit method, which uses a Wintrobe tube, was historically used and is now obsolete or no longer performed. Materials needed are a long-tipped pasture pipette, a centrifuge machine, and a Wintrobe tube. This tube has a measurement of 11.5 cm in length and a bore diameter of 2.5 mm. It has two series of graduations from 0 to 100, one ascending and the other one in descending order. We will be using the graduation on the right for hematocrit, which is 0 at the bottom and 10 at the top. This tube has 10 mm increments, giving a total of 100 mm. Procedure for Wintrobe Method Step 1. Fill the Wintrobe tube with blood. With a long-tipped pasture pipette, transfer EDTA anticoagulated blood into the Wintrobe tube from the bottom going up. Fill up to the 10th mark. Step 2. Centrifugation. Place the tube in the centrifuge. Make sure a counterbalance is placed and centrifuge at 3,000 RPM for 30 minutes. Step 3. Hematocrit reading. Read the PAC cell volume from the scale on the right side of the tube at eye level. Do not include the buffy coat layer in the reading. Step 4. Compute for percent hematocrit. Hematocrit in percent is equal to the PAC cell volume divided by the total volume used multiplied to 100. In this example, Hematocrit is 4.4. Following the computation, 4.4 divided by 10 times 100 equals 44. The hematocrit result for this patient is now 44% or 0.44 liter per liter. The second method is a microhematocrit method, also referred to as the Clay Adams method. Materials needed are capillary tubes sealing clay, microhematocrit reader, and a microhematocrit centrifuge machine. Procedure for the Clay Adams method. Step 1. Blood collection. Capillary blood or anticoagulated blood may be used. For capillary collection, use a heparinized capillary tube as it contains anticoagulant. For this demonstration, EDTA anticoagulated blood was collected. Fill a non-heparinized capillary tube with blood about three-fourths full. Note that the side with no color band should be used. Step 2. Sealing the other end of the tube. Hold the tube horizontally and seal by placing the dry end, or with the colored ring, into the tray with sealing compound at a 90-degree angle. Rotate the tube slightly and remove it from the tray. The plug should be at least 4 millimeters long. Step 3. Centrifuge for 5 minutes at full speed of 12,000 RPM. Balance the tubes in the microhematocrit centrifuge with the clay ends facing outside or away from the center, and it should be touching the rubber gasket. Tighten the head cover and centrifuge. Step 4. Read results using a microhematocrit reader. Place the capillary tube on the slot provided. Level the bottom of the blood line with zero which is the lowest line, and the top plasma line with 100 at the highest diagonal line. Move the adjustable handle where the RBC meets the buffy coat and read the level of red blood cell packing. The hematocrit reading for this tube is 49, therefore giving a 49% or 0.49 liter per liter hematocrit. When two capillary tubes are processed, the values of the duplicate hematocrits should agree within 1%. The different sources of error for both macrohematocrit and microhematocrit method are caused by sample mishandling, incorrect performance, or some disease conditions. An increased concentration of anticoagulant, which usually happens during a short draw, 
decreases the hematocrit reading because of RBC shrinkage. A decreased or an increased result may occur if the specimen was not mixed properly. Hemolyzed samples give a decreased result as red blood cells have already been destroyed before packing. Improper sealing of the capillary tube causes a decreased hematocrit reading because of leakage of blood during centrifugation. The leakage causes the red blood cells to be lost in the lower part of the tube during centrifugation. A delay in reading or failure to read within 10 minutes after centrifugation causes an increased hematocrit reading. Redispersion of red blood cells to plasma gives a slanting of the packed cell volume interface that gives a falsely elevated result. Adding the buffy coat in the reading will give a falsely elevated result. A decrease or increase in the readings may be seen if the microhematocrit reader is not used properly. Insufficient centrifugation causes a falsely increased result. The time and speed of the centrifuge is important to obtain maximum packing. Disorders such as sickle cell anemia, macrocytic anemia, hyperchromic anemia, spherocytosis, and thalassemia may cause plasma to be trapped in the red blood cell layer, causing an increased value. Patient plasma volume may also increase or decrease a hematocrit reading. Blood loss may give a low hematocrit reading because plasma is replaced faster than red blood cells, while dehydration increases hematocrit readings because of a decreased plasma volume. And that ends the different methods for hematocrit determination in the hematology laboratory.